I've lived uh, two movies is escape rooms, and I don't want to do any in uh, real life. Probably Holland Roden. Probably me, but Logan might give me a run. Okay. Absolutely not, because um, I think you're a little bit more detail oriented. Where I would just get um, annoyed and uh, try Let's to go have a beer. Yeah, I'd yeah. give up, and I'd want to get out as soon as possible. I, I've been, I've had like four birthdays at escape rooms, so yeah. I've lived uh, two movies is escape rooms, and I don't want to do any in uh, real life. I'd say either me or Carlito. Carlito. Yeah, oh, I was gonna say Carlito yeah. for sure. Yeah, you busy taking selfies. Carlito was actually the influencer on set. That would be Carlito. <laughs> yes, yes, big singer extraordinaire. Um, and I have a terrible voice, so let's just give it up for the the boy. He's a real singer in real life. Oh God, I would say maybe I don't Tom. Think any of us. Maybe Tom, you know, I mean, he's uh, he was a goofer and uh, always, uh, you know, trying to make everybody laugh. Maybe Tom or India, or, um, one of the two, because I think, uh, you know, they were all very personable. People wanted to get everybody together. Oh, the sna Snapchat, yeah, yeah. Tom, I oh. think for sure, he, he documents everything. There's always a camera. WhatsApp, not Snapchat. See, we're from we're from the states. We're very uh, stupid when it comes to this uh, social social. <laughs> Me, because my lines were so insane. Um, every day it would be, no, stop. We're dying. We're dying. And I just can't remember like if I'm saying we're dying or let's go. So. Or that's like, it's like a 28 year word sentence they want you to say in three seconds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're yeah. the champions, we're going to die, we have to finish the game, we've all played this before. Like it's, you know, before. It's a rapid fire, it's a rapid fire of information or a lot of screaming. And I forget it every time because I'm ignorant. That would obviously be Logan. Can, I don't know if I can, Logan had an ultra, uh, an alternate persona that was Tom Cockerell's father, even though he is younger than Tom. He still birthed Tom somehow, <laughs> was ticked apart in the birthing process. And so uh, it was pretty cool when Baz, Tom's fictitious father was on set. In my eyes, his name was Baz Cockerell. He was about five foot one. Um, he was very <laughs> chubby, very red. And uh, Tom was his pride and joy um, in life. <laughs> but he was a, a massive and, drinker. And you thought of him as a brother. <laughs> <laughs> versus your son. I always. Get my blood into boils, you're my best friend. I thought that Tom's dad really was on set and we're like, no, you just missed him. He's coming in. He came in town this week. And so uh, it took a second for them to realize that unfortunately Logan and Baz will never be in the same room together. Absolutely every one of us. Except for Tom. Tom requires about 2.5 hours of sleep. He'll get everybody up at 5 a.m. for a cold swim, and then somehow be up till 3 a.m. the next night. Like he, he's an energizer. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's, the, that's the Australian in him. But um, yeah, everybody was exhausted because, you know, for three months out of the year, we have to pretend like we're dying. That could be a little bit taxing on the human body and psyche. Ironically, dying is, is takes a lot of energy. Oh, everything in the sand room was the worst because um, we were dealing with a recycled sand situation. The sand was made out of um, old shells and whatnot. It was a recycled sand. And so it smelled like a, a, the interior of a fishbowl. And uh, so we were having to endure this fishbowl experience while getting sand in every crevice um, and uh, having to endure that for at least two weeks. So I'd say that was the most taxing out of the entire shoot. I would say for me, it was ironically the bank, which would sound like the most luxurious because it's just a bank. But we had to do a lot of crawling on the counters and like picking up Tom Cockerell, who's about 6'4". And I am a very statuesque 5'4". And so having to crawl over something or like the span of my body running off of a counter, it did not go well for me. I usually am okay at stunts. I like to think of it as like PE class, like recess. 
when we do Sunset on Set, but that did not go well for me. I was I was really disappointed. I'd like my body just could not take the big counters. I was there's not enough of me. So that was my hardest. I'd say um everybody um it's like the twelfth uh, hour of a sleepover. So it's essentially like, you know, everybody um, riding on either too many drinks or too much caffeine. And, um, you know, we're all delirious because there's been lack of sleep. And then it's like, hey, so let's go on to set for like, uh, you know, two or three hours, pretend to be tortured, then go back and wait for the next setup. And um, like we're in giant white tents um, in like an old sawmill in South Africa. And so all of the environment is just like uh, colliding. And so, you know, um, it, delirium is basically how I could um, describe it. So it's a lot of funny things going on, but um, fever dream-esque. Concrete naps are like my two words that come to mind. Concrete naps. You have to be so good at sleeping on concrete if you want to be an actor. Tom and I would like want to take a nap and we would just lay down. And I remember one of the producers came in, Karina was like, do you guys want like a cot or like, can we breathe? I'm like, we're good. We just need to, I will lay, yeah, lay down wherever you are to sleep.